Okay, so we have a dynamic DNS account set up on our router, and our router is now providing that service with updates as to our IP address. So now, by using that host name from across the internet, we should be able to access any internal network device we point port forwarding on our router to. So the question is, what do we want to point to? Well, we've got this HP Media Vault, and that's all well and good. However, there's another device I have in mind, which a lot of people have difficulty setting up. So in order to sort of hit two birds with one stone, we're going to go over setting up an IP camera. Now, what an IP camera is, is it's sort of like a security camera, and you can mount them in various places in your house that you want to monitor remotely. So once this is set up, we'll be able to monitor whatever room in the house this IP camera is set up in from whatever remote location we happen to be in. This is a pretty popular concept. However, the devices don't really sell that much because people run into difficulties with setting them up. So that's why I want to use this opportunity to demonstrate how to get one to work properly. So right now, that IP camera is sitting next to me connected to our router with an Ethernet cable. So the question is, how do we log into it if we don't know the IP address? Well, this is one of those devices that has one of those convenient little utilities which gives us its IP address. And there's the IP address right there, and there's the MAC address. So we can simply take that information and log in to the IP camera. And on this camera, once we select either ActiveX or Java, we should be able to receive a live picture. And yes, that is live. So what do we want to do next? We're trying to set up a DHCP reservation on this camera in order to give port forwarding something to point to. So let's go into setup and then network setup and ensure that this camera is set up to receive a DHCP address. We also want to make sure that there are no residual wireless connections set up in here which there aren't. So in order to set up our DHCP reservation what is it that we need again? Well we need an IP address which we can choose a name and a MAC address. Well unfortunately this particular web interface does not provide us with a MAC address. Yes it did show up in the little utility but I did not copy that down on purpose because I want to show you a little trick you can use to find a device's MAC address remotely. So what we want to do is we want to go to the command prompt and simply ping that IP address. And what's going on in the background while we're pinging the IP address is the ARP protocol is in the background building a table which matches a device's IP address against its MAC address. So if I were to say ARP minus A, it will return the IP address of the device we just pinged and its MAC address. So now we can use this MAC address in our DHCP reservation. So let's get this out of here real quick. And use that for our DHCP reservation. And what we're talking about here is an IP cam. It's good enough. We're going to give it an IP address of say 132 click add and make sure we say 
apply and there we have our new DHCP reservation so now if I reboot that IP camera it's no longer going to work at this IP address it should work at the new IP address we specified so let me go ahead and power cycle this IP camera by simply unplugging the power cord and plugging it back in and we're going to give it a few seconds to connect to the router and receive its new DHCP reservation. I simply have to sit here and stare at the light. Once it's green and starts blinking, that means we're pretty much ready to go. So let's go ahead and type in this IP camera's new IP address. Voila, there we go. The IP camera now has a DHCP reservation of 192.168.1.132. We'll be able to use that IP address to point our port forwarding rule to, which in turn we'll be able to access using the host name provided us by our dynamic DNS service. Then, once all this is lined up, we should be able to simply type in our dynamic DNS host name from any web browser that's connected to the internet and access this IP camera. All right, let's select Java down here as our method of uh, video and give us a, just a little bit better view. We can see that is indeed live video. So we're connected with an Ethernet cable. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up a wireless connection to this IP camera. And to make life easier on ourselves, let's use good old WPS. And we get this little pop up over here saying it's going to run an application for us. We click either save or run. Let's go ahead and say and what we want to choose is the push button configuration and there's our little push button so let's go back to our Netgear router and get it set up so it's ready to talk to this new IP camera add WPS client click next and yes we want to use the push button connection too so there we go we're all lined up 